I'm back. Yeah, I'm back. What do you have to say for yourself, sir? Greetings, Rita. That is good that you are here. For there is something I wish to tell you privately. Do you have a moment? I shall not keep you long. Though I know your time is precious. Hear him out. You bid him to continue, and make clear your interest in whatever he has to say. Very well, and thank you for your time. And I should further note, matters that pertain directly to the rights I must reveal to you alone. For thus I am obliged. In any case, when you confronted the withdrawn, and the witch, old him, old Milde, you might recall she tended to invoke a certain name, Yishalch. Yeah, Yishalch, the Astral Born. I hesitate to say it even now. You would be forgiven if you look, if you took the ravings of all Mill Day for mere nonsense. However, her words, as it turns out, ring with a certain truth. Before the union of the eight scribes, when first they found themselves here in the downside, this land was even less hospitable, if that can be believed. It was ruled over by the greater titans. The one called Yeshouch was the eldest and most fearsome of the lot. Just the same, the scribes managed to defeat it. They later used Yeshouch's own hide and Ica to bind the Book of Frights. Oh, interesting. However, Yeshouch did not truly die, but by some accounts it seems to be incapable of death. The creature is regenerating even now. The very, very slowly. Its vow is to devour this land and everything in it. Only then can it return into whenever the plane, whenever plane that banished it to ours. So in a way, it is an exile, just like you. If ever the creature should be reborn, you shall be many ages hence. Thus, the ravings of Old Milde are more or less inconsequential for a while, at least. Yes, the history of Yashalch is inexorably linked to the rites, and therefore must be known. I trust your research of the book shall lead you to discover more in time. I hope all of this is some reassurance, and now I leave you to your more immediate concerns. I shall go check and see how everyone is faring at this time. He heads out into the evening, bidding you a good rest of the evening. What? What? Oi, you. <laughs> That's too much fun. Uh, continue your journey. If you don't mind. Big birch roots. Small bog dwellers outpost at the edge of the sea. The little minstrel says someone here can help you pursue the stars across the sea. Well, please, if you don't mind, my lady. This is the place. Let us go see my client's companion as soon as you are ready. What? Seek Big Bertrude. Oh, another sneaky person, huh? Big Bertrude is, is a slick, slick, sickly gathering of bog dwellers who stay within shadows, yet you can feel their eyes surveying everything. The lone minstrel steps forward. Sandalwood sent us. Those words are enough to make the bog dwellers snap to attention. They emerge from the mud and dark and begin inspecting your black wagon with their strange tools. Oh, aren't you lovely? One of the bog dwellers slippers forth. She is larger than the rest and leaves no doubt that she commands the others. Hmm. Thou speakest the name Sandalwood. We would know his whereabouts. Reveal them to us. Good day to you, Big Bertrude. It is a pleasure to meet you at last, for Sandalwood always spoke highly of you and your handiwork. She's a bog dweller, once feared and respected in the Commonwealth for her sorcerous work. The apparent name of the mysterious informant of Edwin, Jodarrell, and Crookie. Ugh. He did, he did. 
Diddy. In turn, we know who thou must be. Yet thou speakest of the past, Sandalwood. Doth he yet live? Speak plainly and quickly. To be quite frank with you, madame, I do not know for certain, for I have been apart with him for some time, carrying out his will. Though I have every faith that I, Sandalwood, lives. As for his current whereabouts, I understand that he waits as somewhere near the Waking Wood, beyond the waters. The Waking Wood, a labyrinth on the f of a forest on the western half of the Black Basin. Few know their way around it. The path to the sacred mount Olodiel lies far beyond these suffocating woods. We wish to seek him there, though, as you can see, our wagon is ill-suited for the task. The one called Bertrude frowns at this, studying the lone minstrel all the while. <sighs> Indeed. Then leave us. Return at dawn. That is all. By your grace, Big Bertrude. The lone minstrel turns away, but High Edwin stops him. Hold on, are you sure about this? Leaving the wagon in their care? All should be in accordance with my current plan. You keep calling Sandalwood your client. He must reward you well. I, in a manner of speaking, he helped me find the sense of purpose I thought lost. Edwin nods at this, then turns to you. Well, my friend, I guess we'll see what happens, right? I'm off to let the others know. You find yourself with time for your vocations, while the bog dwellers go about their business. Cool, cool. We did that last time, alright? Don't know that I want resources. I kinda just wanna do this again, to be honest. I don't really wanna focus on one person. You excuse yourself from the others and go pour over the Book of Rights and its mysteries. If your greater understanding comes to read his influence. Uh, tch -tch -tch. Tenacity. Zero to one or two. Oh, let's just get that up to two then. The eight scribes who composed the book, their influence and their experience spreads through the pages, and to the willing reader's deepest consciousness. Inspiration comes to you in a flash. Whether the book or from within, you cannot tell. Finish studying. Continue your journey. The lone minstrel finds you early the next day. Rita, it is ready. Please, come have a look. The others are already there. Step inside. We got a bell. I see that bell, I do. The black wagon appears different than it did even a day before. The hull is fully sealed and reinforced. An all manner of nautical equipment adorns the port side. Oh, wow. Your people seeing this? Eh? I'm gonna have a look around. The wagon should be fit for sea voyage. Let us depart at your earliest convenience. What about Big Bertrude? She then appears as if on cue. To let Sandalwood heals us twice over. By making Big Bertrude, you could tell him yourself. You wish to accompany us in our voyage north. Our group would welcome someone of your vast experience. Dare they make flirtations? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> what are they doing? She's not French. Dare they make flirtations upon us? No, I. Enough. But should you see that sandalwood? Tell him also to come visit us again. Now, be gone from here. And tell no one that we were paid in favors. She slivers off without another word soon. The lone mistral breaks the silence. We are fortunate that she assisted us, but we should go, just as she said. I know the navigational control and shall explain. This is so exciting! I don't know how to swim! Tizo seems to share Nay's enthusiasm for heading out to sea. I'm beginning to feel ill already. Mm. 
bless you. Let's see. You have not yet been to this region of the downside. Before she left, Big Bertrude shared knowledge of a current that should draw you out to sea. Co? Co Co? Very pretty. Very pretty, huh? Worm Gulf. You and your companions watch the sea as your wagon rolls over the gentle waves. We have crossed into Worm Gulf. I hope that all of you are accl acclimating well. There is no acclimating to these worm infested waters. We risk everything to sail here. As long as we follow the cold current, Big Bertrude is being indicated, we shall be safe. If the next right is in the middle of this sea, I will have adversaries meet us there. They shall find their way as we found ours, which is all part of the scribe's design. Now, reader, please confirm the next point in our sea journey. We seek the Hulk of Oars. According to the stars, the next right shall soon commence here. A carcass of the doomed exploring vessel, Dajravan, lost in the waters of the downside. Right. Outer Solace. Virtue's instructions are to navigate the maze of the moors in a cutting route bearing northeast. Nice. Hmm. This place looks very stinky. I assume it's very odorous. Hmm. The wagon continues rolling gently across the waves. Which seemed to you, you a welcome change of pace after having some of the flagging hands not very long ago. However, Jodariel seems more concerned now than before and paces ceaselessly. When she notices Rookie, she stops him for some questioning. Greentail? How's he doing? Oh, uh, Edwin? Oh, he's pretty much the same, you know. Been up all night, rushing into the waters, if I had to guess. Eh? His first time I thought, see? His first. She turns to you. Rita, please check on Edwin when you have opportunity. He requires our support, and we require his swift recovery. You wish them a good afternoon as you go check up on the others in the group. Later you found Edwin looking out of sorts. Oh, buddy. Oh, hello, my friend. It's just... This hasn't been good for me, I guess. Yeah. It's funny, all this trouble. Just get back to the Commonwealth of all places. Hey, tell me something. What do you miss the most about that place? Nothing springs to mind. Uh, the few f friends you had. You tell him that the were those who did support you over the years, and that it pains you now to be apart from them. Yeah, hi, are you my friend? There's someone I miss terribly back there myself. I'm sure that when you make it out of there, your loved ones will be waiting. Anyway, I, uh, I'll be fine, I think. Thank you for checking, out, checking up on me. You sense he wishes to be alone. There's not much to be done for him now. It appears that Hedwin is too ill to conduct the next riot. May he get well soon. I'm sorry for my interruption, reader. Please again confirm the next point on your voyage. Sea of Solace. You don't mind? It was under pineapple under the sea, sir. By the scribes the sea! I didn't know it was so beautiful! Having escaped the waters of the Wim Gulf, you can now can see that what must be the Hulk of the Oars, far on the horizon. The tempestuous sea of soils lies beyond this death still body of water. Exiled worms from the Sea of Dominion naturally congregate around here. Not everyone has taken the sea village as <laughs> well, however. Oh no, not Tizo. Tizo is wondering if Hedwin is feeling better. 
He requires further rest, Tizo. All we can do is wish him a swift recovery. Reader, sir. From this point, our voyage must diverge from Bertrude's instructions. Please consult with your companions about which course to take. Nay, he believes that the eight scribes shall bless you here. The north current towards the Hulk of Oz runs as quick as uh, under King Oz himself. The current south towards the Hulk of Oz seems with fish and other life. Oh, Tizo. Oh, I want to get blessed. But Tizo. But being blessed, though. But Tizo. I'm sorry, Tizo. I'm oh, so sorry. <laughs> oh, it pains me to do it. You find Nay gazing down into the depths. The water is so very beautiful, and yet, it's very dangerous. They're all, they always said it's very dangerous if you fall in or drink enough of it. But the scribes, they have protected us, and they are watching. I just know. Even out here, in the waters of the Under King Oars, they urge us on. I feel it. I just know. Seventh of the eight scribes of the Book of Drates, known as the Persevering, or the Sea Sojourner. There is no denying that the North Current sends you quickly on your way. Perhaps it is the thought of reaching land again, but you sense a spring in everybody's step. Boyakasha. Kinda of wish I'd gone for fish though now. It's nice, but it's temporary, ain't it? At last you arrive at the Hulk of Oars. After journeying across the sea, it seems the next ride is to commence here soon. Though there is no sign of your next adversaries yet. Alright. Ooh. So, uh, among the Black Wagon's seafaring equipment, Hedwin uses it to signal when food is ready. Oh, okay. Oh, shh. <laughs> Oi! You just keep looking at that bell, huh? Chum, keep at it. Ruski, Ruki seems to be taking issue with your frivolous use of nautical bell. After all, there is no sign of nautical emergency, nor a prepared meal. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I know it's not meal time. That's fine. I was starting to really enjoy the concert ringing, though. Now that it doesn't mean anything to me or anyone anymore, huh? Son of a bitch. Besides ringing the bell, it's probably some pretty good exercise, right, huh? And it's good training for my ears too, huh? You know we cause of ultra sensitive hearing, don't you? Huh? Well, not anymore I don't. <laughs> anyway, thanks. I am in that. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. So be it. If you shall never forgive you for abusing the nautical bell. And so be it. <laughs> <laughs> Brooke Ebery appears, laughing heartily. He was only joking, oh thank god. Probably. <laughs> oh man. What's this? Oh, I'll break the glass. I'm gonna do it. Down the river. The Emperor Soliman Mur. You naught of this, of course. His expedition yielded not the treasure he desired, but brought him closer to his country than he had ever been before. As he travelled down the river Sclorian in pursuit of greed, he found instead an inkling of shame. He saw that sunken faces of his people heard their words for him. In time he could not ignore it, and it proved more than he could bear. The river finally claimed him, his belongings and his retinue. Once the people heard, I understand they cried with joy. Perhaps he ought to have perished. But the mercy shown to him, I think, is what transformed him. Oh. This is green stuff. Uh, a limbless, cold-blooded creature rescued from the sea. It is fully grown and has led a rich life. Mm, very nice. I think. 
Arita, a moment of your time. You ask what's on her mind. Hedwin. He is beginning to recover from his illness. However, its sudden onset serves as a reminder, I believe. I've known Edwin since he was a child, even now. I hesitate to say that he has grown. Nevertheless, there are such things that even I would never say to him directly. For instance, I struggle with his confidence at times. Whether he leads us to our freedom or our doom, I am ambivalent. Speak not a word of this to him, of course. In case that is unclear, I shall tell him in my own way, if and when the time requires. In any case, when times remind me of his mortal weakness, I end up having to consider what should happen should we become separated permanently. She trails off for a while. What I mean to say is, you should know that I am fully pledged now to this quest of ours. Whether Hedwin is the one to lead us to its end or not. I have my reasons. One of them is him. I expect the same holds true for you. That's all I wish to say. Take care, Rita. Hmm. She nods and brushes past you toward the door. Alright. Very nice. Wait. Just gonna bang on this a little bit, you know? Nothing happened. What about you? You got anything? Greetings to you, lovely reader. I'm at your disposal. What's in your mind? There is an undulation I've sensed, reader, which means I think that your black wagon sails the seas. Am I not right? Of course I am. She laughs at this, or herself, perhaps. I scarce remember the sea. It has been a while since I bathed in it, you understand? My memories of it are wistful, nonetheless, although... If I remember correctly, the Sea of Solas is a disgusting mockery of the Emerald Seas near to the Empire. The Empire of Sir dominated the known world for millennia, till the doomed reign of Soliam Mar. Never shall we make the wicked errors of our predecessors. Hmm. Do be careful out there, will you? Now, let me cease my prattling, lest I extend my sentence by another such eternity or two. We had best stick to business. Alright. Am I speaking? Do you know where to find me? Sure do. Alright. What about you? Oh, hey you guys! Funny running into you out here, right in the middle of the drink. Know what I mean? Not a lot of customers today, so have a look. I'll give you a good deal. I don't believe you. Look at that. Yeah. I know you're gonna like this stuff, guys. It's pretty whoa, you know what I mean? And if you want some more, now, I know just the individual and his dad who can get it. Catch my meaning, yeah? Just stop by some other time. Hmm, 18, huh? By you. Yeah. What an aura casting, when aura casting raises the bearer's maximum range. Hmm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> I don't know why that chattering so amusing to me, but it is. You guys have a good day out there. Forgot to uh, use those. Which would I think be useful? Uh, too quickness to banish those. Are b yeah, let's do that one. Uh, plus two, and uh, plop some more on this. Okay, go cool. onwards. <laughs> Having landed at the Hulk of Oars, you and your fellow exiles now anticipate the hour that the rites are to commence again. What do you think, Tizo? 
Don't I look just like Mr. Hedwin? <laughs> Tizo is worried that Hedwin is still feeling unwell. Wait, I think, what's that? A serpentine creature emerges from the water, followed by several others of its kind. You recognize it as a worm of the Sea Dominion. Like a fucking night helmet. What are they all doing here? You see plain by their ritual raiments. The nearest one somehow loosens its mask. Oh my good lord, what? Good sirs and good ladies. So it is you that heed the summons of glorious competition against the knight and his brigade. Well then, let us do battle now without delay. More than our freedom is at stake here, but our very honor. And this knight fully intends to reclaim his. Oh, and let this knight forget. He is called Sir Gilman. I salute you all on behalf of the pirates until the contest. I love you, sir. He is a once proud knight of the Sea Dominion on a self made quest to regain his honor. A triumvirate of worm knights who perceive the rights as great battles to be won. You're amazing. I don't want to beat you. He splashes out of view just as the stars above begin to shimmer with strange light. Here we go again. Don Teton. Of the sea was not enough to thwart your coming here. Ye. Yeah. Unto the hulk of Oris. Ye. Yeah. It would be wise not to underestimate your adversaries here, despite their pitiable look. They're not pitiable, how do you? Referring to the Pyre Hearts. These rights are but another war to them, and that makes you their mortal enemy. No. I expect your battle to be glorious. Why are you so fucking cold? Oh, that's interesting. Corners instead of the uh, middle. Your fellow exiles are gathered on the rotting deck of the Hulk of Oars. As your adversaries clamber into view, Ruki pours up to them. Sir, yeah, what do you worms even doing here? Can't you just swim back to the Commonwealth or the Sea Dominion? Whoever it is you're from, huh? A vast and war-torn undersea regime, home to untold numbers of amphibious worms. Having conquered their waters, the worms clambered onto the Commonwealth's shores in search of new wars. Aha! An excellent point! It seems that these adversaries in the rights are clever, wouldn't you say, sire? J J just get rid of them already, Gilman. As your commanding officer, this knight hereby commands it. Hark! This knight wishes to introduce his noble commander. No worm knight in history has withstood as many frontline battles. Duff your helm, sire, as is our custom. May our adversaries tremble at the sight of you. Sir Gilman attends to his commander's mask, despite his protests. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Hi, buddy. <laughs> Wait! Oh, Kiki of this night his mask. This night hereby presents you the great Sir Deluge. A noble, this is, is it not? It's a petty whim, knight. Of the Sea Dominion, who somehow survived countless battles, uh, somehow, huh? So the Luge trembles and squirms. Aha, uh -huh, so yes, uh, you can swim or no? Aha, uh -huh. of course we knights can swim. All knights of the Sea Dominion can. Right? But we are exiles in this land the same as ye. We can swim, it is true, but it is summarily impossible to swim back up the river down which we were flushed to end up here. Nay, there is but one way to return. 
Silence, Gilman. No, nobody cares. But back to your post. So Gilman hesitates, but does his ease talk. This knight knows who you are, Nightwings. And he is not afraid of you. He somehow climbs back into his mask and coils it up to his full height. No, unguard, eh? The exiles of the worm trim that take their positions as you focus on the Book of Rights. <laughs> Amazing. Read on. Hedwin's illness means he cannot help us here. You shall be counting on us. Okay. Well, I wasn't going to pick him anyway, I'll be real honest right. with you. Wait, no. No! Return. Not Ruki. Unchoose. Unchoose. Shit. <laughs> Sorry, Dizo. You're not in the last one, I guess. So sorry. Oh, that's a weird long. Let us make short work of this lot. Gilman! S status report! What is the enemy's position? They now stand ready to confront us, sire. A very brave triumvirate, they seem to this knight's eye. But brave, air-sucking monsters, one and all. Pirehearts, Miretta. <laughs> Alright. Oh, okay. Booyah. Uh, not you. Sorry. Sorry for being so good. <laughs> What's these guys shtick anyway? Ooh, okay, they leave shit about, huh? Nice try, buddy. Buggers. Did you see such a thing coming? No. Gilman, your form is sloppy. Fight them as though your miserable life is on the line. Your words won't miss, sire. This knight gives every right his very, very best. Though perhaps we do have much to learn from such brave triumvirates as the one whom we now face. Uh, whose side are you on? Get out there and vanquish them at once. Well, oh, those bozos bicker even more than we do. Let's get them while they're busy fighting, eh? What are they doing? Alright, what? His little wonder <laughs> Just do that then. <laughs> uh, if they're gonna do that, Jared, oh, never mind, they've stopped. I should have took advantage of it. I did not. Oh, that's bloody unfortunate, isn't it? Booyah. Booyah. This ball. Come on, come on, come on. Oh god, I wish I had some stamina. <laughs> come on, come on, you die. Nice. It was a glorious performance, I must say. Thanks, man. No, you like me, really. It's complete. Yeah, those ones were quick at that time, but Rusky Grinter's quick air. The sea was making me a little queasy, honestly. But we still won. We won. Hmm. I expected more from the Worm Knights of the Sea Dominion. This knight commends you, noble Nightwings. Gloriously fought indeed, and this knight shall wistfully remember this defeat until the end of his days. 
S silence, Gilman. This is all your fault. And now, cavorting with our enemies, how dare you? This knight was but a tempting honorary compliment, sire. Is it not in accordance with the rights to praise one's adversary on a worthy outcome? W w worthy? This knight will show you worthy, you miserable little minnow. You are a failure, Gilman. Get out. Get now from the knight's sight. Oh, Gilman. Poor, poor Gilman. Time for level up, boys. Somebody, someone got level up. Nobody wants to level up. Oh, Tizo, I'm so sorry. I'm so very sorry. Until the stars align. All right. After prevailing over the pyre hearts with great prowess. You at last return to the wagon with your companions. There is little discussion of the Pyarts, who seem to have already swarmed them off toward the whatever the next star directed them. Instead of your fellow exiles, attention turns toward your companion, who was absent from the right. How is Edwin? The lone minstrel makes a sound, but no words form as yet. Something is troubling him. I, uh, I urged him to remain bedridden. And? And he... he simply would not listen. I'm very sorry, but... What? What? Everyone stares at the lone minstrel in stunned silence. The lone minstrel breathes a heavy sigh. But then... Hey, what's with the long faces, everyone? Minstrel, I should wring that neck of yours. As I was attempting to explain, Edwin is already up and about despite my having strongly recommended further rest. Those are unaccounted to sea voyage, unaccustomed to sea voyage even, and take ill. They are very likely to experience further symptoms if they do not remain bedridden, or at least sedentary. Hedwin is running a considerable risk of having to spend another night in great discomfort. What are you, eh, doctor? Nay. Although I travelled with one once. Extensively. Look, I appreciate your caution, con caution and concern, Tariq. But I'm pretty well accustomed to discomfort here, and I'd see how things turned out tonight. I haven't had to stay out of a right like that before. So, you're back among the living then, Edwin? Yeah, I was just seasick. Nevertheless, your full recovery requires rest. I think we all could do some rest after tonight, anyway. Thank you, everyone, for your concern. And I'm sorry that I worried you, or caused you further burden. He turns to you. My friend, what do you say we figure out where to go next? I'm beginning to miss being on solid ground. Follow him outside where the nice guy waits. Hey, I wanted to thank you for conducting the right back there without me being there. I could rest easy knowing you and the others will get through it. Anyway, I'll leave you to the reading. Can't begin to imagine what we'll be off to next. We're well past anywhere in the downside I've ever been. Even Jody hasn't gone this far. He bid you good, good evening as you turn your attention back to the sky. Ah, uh, not you. Favorite? Yeah. Hmm. Crikey. Still further north, then. Not simply north. This shall prove difficult. What's the problem? Our destination is behind the Deathless Tempest. A vessel such as ours has little hope of traversing it intact. A tempest raging in the Sea of Solas seemingly for all eternity. The storm that arose after the death of the Sea Titan. Unfathomed planets never has entirely subsided. Can't we go around it? Given our confrontation with the pirates, our chances back in rim held water would be even worse. Exiled worms of the Sea Dominion tend to seek out the cold of the downside seas. 
Not to be reckless and single-minded, they were perfectly suited to fill the Commonwealth's front lines. Ah, come on, people! It'll be just another day in the downside. Go get yourself some sleep while we can still can, eh? Bet you you'll feel better in the morning. Your optimism is infectious. Isn't it, eh? You all concur that the rest is in order. But the sea journey has been taxing to everyone. Come daybreak, you shall have to find your way to sail past the deathless tempest. Oh shit. Uh, one second. How does one save? I assume it's just doing this. Alright, anyways. Fun times, fun times I had. This game's great. So far, I love it. Ooh, it's kind of like, I don't know what it's like. Honestly, I have no idea what it's like. <laughs> Man, the little animations on this screen is really cool. I like it. Ah, uh, but it's awesome. It's cool. Characters seem fun. The art style is incredible. Uh, gameplay's pretty fun. I don't know what I was expecting from the gameplay. It wasn't this, but I like it. I knew it was weird. I'd heard it was weird. But, uh, yeah. It's cool. I remember watching stuff about it like ages ago. A long time ago. So I guess at one point I knew. <laughs> One point long ago, but yeah, it's fun times. Hope you had fun times. So long, farewell. Auf Wiedersehen. Hato.